Thanks for watching. I'm Prerna Agarwal, Technical Product Owner for The Guardian. Today, I'll be giving you a demo on how to build Guardian using Docker. So there are basically three ways to uh, install Guardian locally. One is using Docker. Second is free build containers. Third is manually. But I would rather focus mostly on using Docker. So as you can see, there are six steps on building Guardian locally using Docker. One, the first step is to clone the repo from the GitHub. So when you go to github.com slash hash slash Guardian, here you will see actually a code button. So when you click on this, you again have three methods to clone this repo. One is through HTTPS, through SSH, or through GitHub CLI. I would like to clone this using the GitHub HTTPS URL. So I would like to copy and paste this URL. And I would like to actually open my command prompt. So I am open my command prompt. Now I would like to first go to my desktop and change the path. Now, as you can see, I'm on my desktop path. I would say I would enter git clone and then I would just paste the URL which I copied and click on enter so as as you can see the guardian repo has been cloned and it it will get saved on the desktop this would take a bit of time to run it so once the guardian has cloned as you can see now i can open that particular folder in my visual editor so I'm using right now over here the visual studio code where you can just click on file and then you can actually click on the open folder and select that particular folder so once that folder is open you will actually see this particular uh, folder has been opened over here now the next step in the following process is you need to configure the .env file there are a couple of files which need to be updated. So one is if you just want to use a default setting, so you can just go to configs folder and then when you click on .env .guardian.system, you will open this file. This is the main file, the configuration file, which you need to change some parameters in. So the first parameter, what you need to change is the operator ID. If you are using testnet, the first two parameters remains the same. So the next thing what you have to do is operator underscore ID. So this ID actually can be generated by logging into Hedera portal. When you go to portal.hedera.com, you need to enter your email address and password. Once you get there, you will see these hex encoded private key, DER encoded private key, DER encoded public key, and the account ID. The operator ID is nothing but your account ID. So you need to copy this and paste it over here so the, the operator key is when you go to again back to portal.hedera.com you need to go to der encoded private key and then when you click on this is your operator key you need to take that and enter at the operator key the initial topic id will auto be will auto generated so you don't have to edit or do anything so these are the two parameters first you need to update now moving forward when you scroll down you need to update the ipfs storage key and storage proof in order to you do this first is you need to first select which ipfs provider you want to use whether you want to use web3 storage or local if you want to use web3 storage you just enter web3 storage and then you go to our documentation and here you also have how to generate in detail the web 3 storage api key so you have a detailed documentation and a demo video over here so please follow this uh, you need to first create an account in web 3 storage and then you need to follow a couple of steps while installing w3 cli and checking whether the node version and the npm version are compatible with it then you need to just follow some of the commands in w3 cli to generate the ipfs proof and ipfs key just make sure that the ipfs key when you generate it starts by mg whereas the ipfs storage proof will have a, a base 64 proof generated 
So in order to just show you a quick example, as you can see, this is this was my IPFS storage key, which was generated by using that process. So I generated that in the terminal and then I copy pasted and same with IPFS storage proof. I have to generate that and then I copy pasted that in detail over here. Once you create, once you enter your IPFS storage key and IPFS proof, then you click on terminal, you click on new terminal. Here you need to follow the next step. So we did follow the step, which was the third step in build documentation. So we did the configuration file. We also updated the IPFS storage key and proof. Now one more addition. You need to set up the chat a, chat GPT API key if you want to enable AI search and guided search. If you want that, you can just update that chat GPT key over here. So once that is updated, you need to now run the Docker. So in order to run the Docker, you need to copy and paste the Docker compose up hyphen D hyphen belt. Now, when you go to your terminal and then you enter that particular and when you click on enter, you will be building uh, the Guardian. It will take a bit of time because there are so many services which need to be installed and uh, uh, run in the Docker. So it will take a bit of time depending on your system configurations. But if it is built, you will actually get get a detailed services running saying that it has started. So as you can see, I did run it. And then when I complete it, I will see all the services indicating that it is healthy started. Once that is done, you will see that the Guardian is running. And in order to check that, you can also go to localhost colon 3000. And when you click on that, you will see the Guardian running. As you can see, my Guardian is running. Once I complete all these steps, you will see Guardian running and then you can create standard registry and then you can create the policy or create the schemas and you can play around with Guardian. So we have detailed documentation in our docs.herero.com slash Guardian and please let us know if you find any issues. Thank you. Have a great day.